Hey, what's up, everyone? How you doing? It's me, Mr. Four Caps Caleb. So, Toyota Supra, man. God damn. I gotta tell you, man, some of these old cars, you know, lately I've been kind of getting into Gran Turismo. I've been collecting a bunch of these old 90s and 80s cars. Hey, hey, Mamba Man's in the house. And I gotta tell you, man, I prefer these old cars in terms of performance and style. I don't know. I, pref I still prefer them, though. I don't know. There's something about them, man, that I... Here's my problem with these new cars. These new cars are like... They're like electric shavers. They all look the same. They're all the same design. Same old, same old press a button here. Uh, put the key in your pocket, leave it in the car. Uh, it's like uh, there's too much computer technology in these new cars. Uh, I don't know. It's just... Uh, it's just my opinion. It's subjective. It is subjective. This is a Supra. Do you have a Supra right here, as you can see? Right there. This is the same Toyota Supra that Paul Walker uh, was uh, driving in uh, the Fast and the Furious, the 2001, the first Fast and the Furious. Except, you know, his was customized with uh, much better fuel injection, NOS, and all that stuff. I think it was the same year, 1997, yeah, the same Toyota Supra, 1997, so what's up Mamba Man, how you doing bro, what's going on, how you been, uh, I, dude, I didn't feel like, just to let you know, I didn't feel like playing the, uh, uh, I'll do it some other time, I didn't feel like playing, um, Deadly Premonition 2. I, dude, I was too tired for to be listening to that music, you know. Do, do, do. Oh, awesome, dude. You got Ghost of Tsushima. That's what I'm talking about. Man, you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. You're gonna definitely love it, man. Did you, um... Did you get... A, did you download the dynamic team, the one that I showed you? You gotta get that dynamic team, man. That dynamic team, it's awesome. Bro. The way the leaves are blowing from the trees, and uh, you see that uh, main character, Samurai. Yeah, oh, dude, that shit is just amazing, man. And there's another one. There's another um, dynamic team, but you're gonna have to um, wait till Friday or tomorrow midnight till you can download it. You know, I was I was watching something today. Just briefly, I saw it because I was busy. I didn't have time um, to be collecting. Believe me, guys, if I was one of those uh, big YouTubers who were quarantined, making shitload of money, just sitting home, believe me, I would have fucking time to to research all this bullshit um, because they have time to research. Microsoft is at it again. Microsoft will never learn. Microsoft now is trying to, you know, showcase the, this new architecture that they have. I forgot the name, what it was called. This new architecture, whatever. Uh, saying basically how this new architecture is going to be a uh, defying moment for the Microsoft Xbox Series X and that PlayStation 5 should be worried about it. 
And then Phil Spencer saying that he has no regrets shutting down Mixer. I don't know, man. It feels to me like Xbox will never learn. It feels to me like uh, they're like they took a certain pill and they they swallow that pill. It's called the green pill, and they will not let it go. They will never let it go. It's not all about the power, man. See, this is what what. Phil Spencer doesn't seem to understand. He doesn't really give a... It don't really matter, dude. It don't really matter how powerful your Xbox is, how technically advanced it is, if you're not taking advantage of it. What's the point of all that power if you're not taking advantage of it? Why don't you utilize the virtual reality? I mean, what's going to take for Microsoft... To utilize the virtual reality. Do you understand how awesome VR would look on that X Series X, even on the Xbox One X with the six teraflops, with a much higher resolution? You know. Hey, what's up, Cameron D? How you doing, brother? I don't know, dude. Uh, I think I, I realize now why Microsoft. We'll never learn their lesson, dude. Oh, you bought a digital deluxe edition? Awesome, dude. That's great. I'm, I'm, I'm glad, man. You guys gonna help Ghost of Tsushima? I think Ghost of Tsushima is gonna sell like crazy, man. Um, it's gonna sell like ridiculously. It might even outsell The Last of Us Part Two. No kidding. I think they might even outsell The Last of Us Part 2. Alright, let's try a different track. What do we got here? Uh, let's go over here. And let's go with... Uh, let's go with Sylvia, dude. I haven't used this. Let's go actually with this one. Sylvia. Let's go with Sylvia. Sorry about that. I'm just trying out these old 90s cars. You know. Toyotas. I have a couple of Nissans as well. Actually, wait a minute. This, is this a Toyota? Actually, this is a Nissan. My, I'm sorry. This is Nissan. Jesus Christ. It is a Nissan. What the fuck's wrong with me? Here we go. <laughs> I was about to say, it is a Nissan. Hold on. No, that's pretty cool, man. I'm glad that you got the physical copy. Um... You know, if you're a collector, if you're somebody who's collecting a lot, I think having that physical copy is awesome, dude. You know, instead of just sitting somewhere digitally. Because remember, you can always put in a disc inside a uh, PlayStation 4 Pro and uh, install it. That's all you have to do. This Nissan Silvia, man, it's still pretty good. By the way, did you guys see uh, the photo mode? How awesome that photo mode is, man, on um, Ghost of Tsushima. That thing looks bananas. The amount of things you can do on it, it's just, just crazy. Let's pass him by, hold on. 
with our Sylvia. Here we go. Uh, Cameron, the, I don't think I'll be able to play it on midnight because uh, I'm going to be super tired. You know, I'll have to get some sleep. Probably uh, Friday, 12 noon, I'll do it, you know. It's like the best time to do it is Friday, 12 noon. And that's when I'm definitely going to do it. Because I want to play that game fresh. You know, full of energy, ready to go. Because uh, if I'm tired, dude, then I'm not gonna—I'm not gonna even care. If I'm exhausted, dude, I'm not gonna even care what's in front of me. Uh, you know, I don't care how photorealistic the game looks and how beautiful it sounds. You know, when you when you are exhausted, dude, when you fatigue, you know what I mean. You you are into you know uh, training and and physical activities. Uh, you are a trainer. So you know exactly what I'm talking about, man. If you don't get that sleep, you're gonna have fatigue. And with that fatigue, dude, you're not gonna function. You can't function. You're like, fuck this. You know? You're like exhausted. So I need like to be able to, yeah. So I'm just gonna do it on noon. And we got the entire Friday, man. We got, you know me, no one does longer live streams than me. If there's somebody out there that does longer live streams, uh, uh, please let me know. <laughs> so it's gonna be 12 o'clock noon, and then uh, we'll go all the way till 10 o'clock. Make it. We'll take a little intermission here and there, maybe like 15 minute intermission around 6 o'clock, and then we'll go all the way through 10 o'clock, and then at 10 o'clock, you know, 10 o'clock it's where we're gonna end it so it's gonna be six hours seven let me see six seven eight nine ten hours total of ten hours was that Batman Arkham mixed with what I know that the Xbox has um, Hold on, let me let me grab another car instead of this one. Here we go. I want to get um I want to try the other Nissan. I got an, another Nissan right here. Let's go to Nürburgring. All right, let's go with a Type X. This is 96 Nissan 180SX. That's better. Here we go. But speaking of Batman, Batman Arkham, um, I don't know if, if the Rocksteady is going to do it. I guess they have to do it if they want to make a Batman game because Warner Brothers has a partnership with the DC. They're practically, you know, partners. So this means that we might see exclusive Batman video game for X Series X, Xbox Game Studios. We might see um, some more DC characters on the Xbox because of the, the Warner Brothers Interactive and Warner Brothers Interactive obviously 
It's in partnership with DC. So we'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting. You know, I mean, look, Xbox has some good lineup of um, developers on their game studios. And they also have CD Projekt Red. Don't forget the CD Projekt Red uh, joined the uh, Xbox Game Studios. So, hey, look, I hope that they can bring some type of AAA quality new IPs with all these new developers on board. But how long do we have to wait? You know, with this COVID-19 situation, when we're going to see a, a fresh... Look, the bottom line is this. Sony doesn't care. Sony is done competing. They already won. They've been winning for 25 years. Okay? Sony has nothing left to prove to anybody. So all of you Xbox fanboys who are watching this, uh, I want you to listen very carefully even though I'm not a Sony fanboy, but I'll speak on behalf of Sony fanboys. In 25 plus years, Sony has nothing left to prove. Okay, let me repeat this one more time so maybe it sinks, uh, sinks in to your thick head. Sony has nothing left fucking to prove in 25 plus fucking years. You, Microsoft, have plenty of fucking to prove. So you are falling behind. You're behind the fucking curve, way down behind the fucking curve. Sony is not behind the fucking curve. Sony is way ahead of the fucking curve. So you, Microsoft and Phil Spencer, you need to prove that you still have that beacon of hope. Like the uh, Peter Moore did with the Xbox 360. You need to go back to the Xbox 360 days. That's what you need to do. Because all that power... All that rendering shit doesn't mean a fucking squat if you're not utilizing it, okay? So hopefully, you guys hear me loud and clear. Oh, yes, you Xbox fanboys out there, I know you're watching. I hope you can hear me loud and clear. And I hope that your Phil Spencer will deliver because I'm a gamer and I want to experience greatness I don't give a rat's ass which fucking brand it is but I do give a rat's ass about the experience and I don't give a shit who delivers the experience if Stadia delivers the experience fuck I love Stadia whoever can bring the experience I don't care if the fucking Martians from Mars come here and deliver the fucking experience I don't give a rat's ass who it is okay if the Mongols comes in from fucking past and they bring me some kind of amazing experience, I don't give a rat's ass. If Dracula himself from Romania fucking comes here and brings something substantially awesome, I don't care who it is. I don't care what the fucking brand it is. I just care about the experience. And that's the difference between me and the rest of you fanboys out there. But don't worry, you're never going to be like me because you're not me. And that's a great fucking thing for me. Let's move on. How many times do I have to drop this fucking mic? Drop this microphone like Godzilla of a microphone. Hold on. then you have your Mr. Phil Spencer saying, oh, 
I don't regret shutting down the mixer. Please don't make me put a fucking video of him saying, the mixer is the greatest thing ever. We're so happy to support mixer. Yet there's barely anybody on fucking mixer. Barely anybody. Even their own fucking staff on mixer had like what? 20 views in one month? 30 views in one month? Three people watching maybe once a month? Come on, listen. Why can't people fucking admit when something it's a failure? When it's a failure, it's a fucking failure. Just unplug it. Why, why are you Microsoft supporting failed projects? Why? Why? The reason you are in this fucking catastrophe, it's because you're too focused on what you want people to, to have. Instead of listening to what people are telling you. How many times we told you, we don't give a shit about a Kinect. And what did you do? In 2013, you shoved the fucking Kinect. How many times we told you we don't care about DVR and, and watching televisions on a console? We don't care about the DVR. If I want to buy a fucking DVR, I'll buy a DVR. I'll, I'll, I'll buy a TiVo and watch my recorded TV shows on TiVo. I'm buying a console because of video games. It's that simple. If I want to watch 4K movies or Blu-ray movies, I'm going to buy a Blu-ray fucking player. You need to stick to what's the important thing. Why are people buying consoles? Because of video games. Video games and exclusivity. Certain exclu exclusivity, certain exclusive fucking games, they're only available on that console. That's very important to remember. But hey, I rest my case. What can I tell you, Microsoft? What can I tell you? It's the same old, same old. Hi, brother. Hold on. I think I turned the wrong way. Here we go. Wait a minute. I don't know what's going on with my VR. My VR is just like right now. It's all over the place. Look at this. <laughs> Hold on. What the fuck? Let me try and drive like this. Hold on. This is this is funny. Wait a minute. Wait. This is hilarious, dude. Check this out. I'm in the back seat, bro. It's actually kind of cool being in the back seat, man. What was that, Cameron? I'm sorry, I, I didn't get a chance to read that message. Could you uh, repeat that message? Let me. Uh, I don't know why, man. The um, the PlayStation VR comments just they don't stay too long. They just show up briefly and they and they leave. You were asking me something about PC gaming. Uh, I don't know what was it. 
No, VR is pretty cool, dude. People who don't like VR, they never try the VR. You know what I mean? Will the PC gaming die? PC gaming will never die, uh, Cameron D, in my opinion. Because the whole thing started from PC, from personal computers. IBM, uh, Spectrum, Sinclair, ZX, Commodore 64. These are all personal computers. Yes, you can play video games on them, but they're all personal computers. So the whole thing started from PC. PC, we always have a foothold, uh, you know, that there'll always be video games on on PC, man. PC, it's always going to be there. Uh, because PC, it's a personal computer, and you can do whatever you want to do on it. Play video games, all kinds of video games. Uh, you can play virtual reality. I mean, the list goes on and on. Well, here's the thing. You got to remember, um, you don't have to spend ridiculous amount of money to be a PC gamer. Some people, they just play on a 1080p, you know. And for 1080p, medium settings, uh, you don't really need to spend that kind of crazy money. For like, for $500, you can have a, like a decent gaming PC that can play 1080p uh, with medium settings. You know, look what these laptops are doing. Uh, and also got to remember, on top of that, you got the cloud gaming, and uh, and majority of people actually they're playing World of Warcraft. Like it's it's, it's a good statistic. If you look at, for example, the Windows users, uh, they're playing Minecraft, they're playing World of Warcraft, they're playing all of these MMO multiplayer massively multiplayer games uh, so they're they're also buying a PC for iRacing and and some other simulations so and then you got World of Warcraft I just mentioned World of Warcraft so you don't necessarily need to like go all out crazy to uh, in, enjoy PC gaming. PC gaming, you know, you can enjoy PC gaming on a on a 970. Seriously. 1080p, 970. I have 970. You can easily enjoy it. Even on a 1060, on a 1050. 1050 Ti, you can still enjoy PC gaming. So you don't really necessarily need uh, a Hold on. I might have to end this. Wait a minute. I'm having a problem here with the camera. Does the PlayStation has the best selection of games? Uh, they definitely have an outstanding exclusive lineup of games for sure and when you look at their history yeah they got like a, a juggernaut of a library uh... hold on i'm not sure what the hell's going on with my my playstation is taking a dump i don't know what the deal is with my camera here but anywho, hold on. Here we go. Sorry about that. PlayStation has some juggernauts of uh, of video games I mean since 1997 all the way till now I mean look at these games that they have since 1997 
1998, 1999, 2000, 2001, 2002. I mean, the list is, the list is too, too huge to... It would take me forever just to, to list all of the games that they have in their library. But, again, PC has a pretty hefty list of video games that are, you know, exclusively made on a PC as well. PC, it's... To me personally, always going to be a personal computer uh, for me to do the live streamings, video editing, creating music, uh, doing other things. But at the same time, there's so many cool experiences you can have on a PC. Because PC is a personal computer and therefore there's really no limitations. Anybody can create a video game as long as you can legally publish it. As long as you can legally put it out there on on Steam, Epic Store, or what have you, or GOG, you know, you can always create something. And applications, look at these apps, all these applications, they're available, uh, so. And then you look at the, obviously, um, virtual reality and how many games there are on the PC regarding virtual reality. And then you look at these massively multiplayer online games. Uh, all of that stuff, when you combine all of that, um, PCs, I mean, PC gaming is not going anywhere. Uh, that's for sure. It ain't going nowhere. Oh, absolutely, man. That fan's going to be running, like... I think it's going to be running probably more than on The Last of Us because there's so much stuff to render uh, on... Uh... Hold on a second. Sorry about that. There's so much to render on... Uh... Ghost of Tsushima because it's a open world game so there's tons of stuff happening rendering the uh, the terrain the the NPCs dynamic weather wind blowing all that stuff man it's gonna be obviously it's gonna take a huge toll on the processing GPU power that uh, PlayStation 4 Pro is going to have to deliver. I think they're squeezing every ounce of juice from PlayStation 4 Pro to give us that visceral experience. Let's go to Tokyo. Let's go during the night. And let's try. I already tried this. Try that. Try that. What else do I want to try? What is this? Toyota. Integra. Yeah, let's go with a Toyota. GTS 97. Or should we go with a Supra? Let's go to Supra. Let's take Supra. Yeah. Uh, and what what a good way to to end the uh, PlayStation PlayStation Four Pro in four and three and a half years in four years I'm sorry was it three and a half years 2016 PlayStation Four Pro almost four years uh, it's pretty amazing what uh, what PlayStation Four Pro was able to deliver. 
And it also proves my point that it's not all about a the power, you know. And this is what Microsoft it's having a difficult time um, wrapping their heads around. It's not about the power. It's about how you utilize that power that you have to to give us some unique experience. Look what Nintendo Switch is doing. It's outselling the Xbox One X. And it's nowhere near as powerful as uh, PlayStation 4 Pro and uh, Xbox One X. And, but why is it selling so well? Because of the experience. Because of the video games. Because of the characters they have in the video games. Because of these cool... Exclusives that they have. Hold on. Oh man, this is just simply bananas. Hold on a sec. I really don't know what's going on with my PlayStation VR, man. It's just not working properly. It's just like all over the place, dude. I don't know what the deal is. This is weird, man. Alright, now we're getting somewhere. I don't know, you know, they're being very quiet, they're not saying much. Maybe they're trying to figure out how many quantities they need, or maybe they're trying to figure out if they can meet demands for uh, pre-orders. Because you got to remember, man, that it's going to be a ridiculous amount of people trying to pre-order that game. I mean, that console. How many? 10 million? Oh, that's pretty darn good. But I don't know why they're keeping it secret uh, as far as pre-orders. I think there's all just the rumors. Uh, MU... MUW because Sony is really not saying much and um, I don't I don't think they want people to know for whatever reasons they might be struggling I don't know man this COVID-19 situation they might be struggling with uh, trying to meet the demands to to get many quantities I don't know how many, 10 million, how many they want to ship, 10 million on a launch day? Lockdown. I mean, I don't get it, man. Uh, maybe somebody can explain it to me. I mean, you're gonna let people listen. I don't care what kind of tragedy it is. I don't give a shit. I'll say something publicly right now. I don't give a rat's ass 
what kind of fucking tragedy it is. I don't care what happens. You have a pandemic. So it's okay to let thousands of fucking people to go around and protest and, and loot and, and steal and beat other fucking people. They're not wearing a mask, but that's okay. You have no fucking problem with that. You're not gonna call National Guards. You're not gonna declare a martial law. That's fucking okay. But now, when things are back to fucking normal, now you're gonna put us on the fucking lockdown. Somebody please explain this to me because I'm having a difficult fucking time putting the two and two together. Like I said, I don't give a shit what kind of tragedy it is. There's always gonna be tragedies. There's always gonna be some shit thing that's gonna happen. It's part of the human nature. It's been like this for thousands of fucking years. Okay, but what I don't fucking get is what's true. So is there a, is there a virus or maybe there's no virus? What the fuck's going on? Is this just politics? Is this just playing politics for one party? And you're willing to sacrifice everything because of that? So, I don't know. I don't get it, dude. I don't get it. Thousands of people. What was it? May? Month of May? Month of June? Thousands of fucking people. Like World War Z zombies. Prowling through the fucking streets. No mask, no nothing. Social distancing my ass. That's okay. So I guess... Maybe there is no virus. Maybe it's all bullshit. Maybe it's all bullshit. I don't know. But if somebody can explain it to me, I'll be more than fucking happy to listen to and look at the fucking evidence if there's any. So this whole fucking thing makes no fucking sense. Really. It makes no fucking sense. It doesn't make any fucking sense. It makes sense from somebody's narrative who wants to be power hungry to be in the office to fit the narrative. I don't know, dude. It's just this whole thing is just one big. Even if it's Illuminati's, they fucking failed. Seriously, you Illuminati's, you fucking failed with this fucking shit, too. It didn't quite work out the way the way you expected it now, did it? It didn't fucking go the way you expected it. Or maybe it's a good fucking thing that it didn't. Uh, so I don't get it. It's it's this is the biggest this is a failure across the board. It, nothing makes any fucking sense. You know. I don't get it, dude. People don't want to wear a mask. I mean, today I was like, I was, uh, where did I go today? Anyway, it was a, like a gas station. It was a liquor store there. And then there was a Dunkin' Donuts. And I saw like 10 people there. And then there was like 10 of them not wearing a mask. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, so should I even get something from Dunkin' Donuts? If no one's wearing a mask, I was like, fuck, no, I'm not going to get nothing from Dunkin' Donuts. I was like, fuck it. You know, I was like, why should I be the only geezer? Well, what's the point of me wearing a mask if those 10 other dudes there standing in line are not wearing a mask? And now I have to order something, pick it up. I don't know, dude. It's just, uh, I'm just using a bunch of cans, man. I'm eating food from a can. Bunch of tuna, bunch of beans, um... I tried to make my own sandwiches. You know, I'm kind of working on creating my own cuisine, like my own cooking. <laughs> I never believe I say this, but I'm I'm learning to cook and shit my own way. Um, because um, I don't trust it, man. I don't trust it. You have to wear a mask and go to Tsushima. Shida is wearing it. You got to wear it too. 
<sighs> I don't know, man. Well, there you go. It's true. I learned how to cook, um, not just from YouTube, but uh, I I know a chef. I know I know uh, a friend of mine. He's a chef. He used to be a chef, and he shows me some tricks here and there. Yeah, JC. What's up, JC? Let's see what else? Uh, okay. So I tried Toyota Supra. I tried Sylvia. Tried MR2. Let me try something that I haven't tried yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go with a Type R Honda and then Integra. I don't think anything's going to be able... Uh, remember when I told you, guys, that um, nothing will be back to normal. Like it used to be. Well, there you have it. I hate to be always right. <sighs> But I'm always right, apparently. <laughs> Even when I'm wrong, I'm right. It's just people don't see it. Remember I told you there's no going back to normal? I think, I, be, I believe I said it. I think either Cameron D or Mr. Urban can, can uh, definitely... Uh, confirm on this I think I said it like multiple time on the live stream I said there's no going back to normal after this football games are cancelled NBA games gonna be cancelled uh, everything's cancelled and NCAA I was dude I know that, that we're not back in normal because if I cannot watch my FSU NCAA college football games. If, if I cannot watch my... Which I should be watching right now. If I can't watch my college football games, then you know... You know... That we're not in normal. When you're having a difficult time releasing a movie... In a movie theater... You know we're not back in normal. It's far from it, dude. And did you guys hear the news? Oh. It's fucking crazy in Florida, dude. Florida, it's like, dude. Uh, you need a cloth. You need like a very soft cloth. Like one of those fiber cloths. Um, you know the cloth that you get with your glasses? You know, to, to wipe out, the, to clean your glasses, like your sunglasses or whatever, any type of glasses. It's one of those cloths. You need that soft cloth. Uh, yeah, the cloth will do it. Don't use alcohol, Jesus Christ. Whatever you do, do not use the alcohol. That's a no-no. Yeah. Yeah, fleece cloth, that'll do it. Ah, it's not gonna burn. Hey, listen, man, this too shall pass. I said to um, what's her name the other day? Um, my God, Naomi, Jennifer, was it Jennifer? I forgot her name, dude. Anyway, uh, Jennifer Hale. You know she's saddened by so many things. Can't hear a good news. Even the guy from the Mythbusters passed away at age 49, and it's it's 2020 is just a shitty year. And I I left her like a little uh, solid snake gif, where I said basically, "This too shall pass. Don't worry, Naomi. This too shall pass." And uh, I don't know, just kind of to lighten up her day, dude. I left that message. 
Because, yes, right now it sucks. But it will pass. It will pass. You know, it's not going to be like this forever, guys. What the fuck's going on with my... Listen, man. Something's wrong with my... Um... Look at this. I want to drive like this. Can I drive like this? This is fucked up, dude. What kind of shit is this? Look at this. What the fuck's going on, man? I think my... I think my VR is dying. My PlayStation VR is dying. <laughs> Look at this. This is weird. This is like having a camera on... This is kind of cool. It's like a GoPro, right? It's like a GoPro Hero camera attached on the side of the, the windshield. It is kind of cool, right? James, I don't know. I think it's better not to think about it. Listen. Um, thinking about this stuff... It's only going to make you crazy. Uh, it's going to fry your brain. And uh, you're going to go crazy. You're going you're gonna to lose it, man. Um, just... I always tell people, don't worry about the things you can't control. I think this is something you should be on a billboard. Don't worry about the stuff you can't control. Obviously, we can't control this. How are you going to control 300 million people? You can't even control your girlfriend. How are you going to control uh, 300 million people? Let alone 8 billion people. So I always tell people, don't worry about things you can't control. Just uh, enjoy your life, man. Be glad that you are alive. Count your blessings every day you wake up. Every day you wake up, just uh, knock on the wood and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, dear God, that I'm alive. Thank you for letting me breathe this fresh air. And that's that, man. That's all you can do. Honestly. Like, thank you, dear Lord, that you're letting me play PlayStation VR. Because, uh, hey, things are not so bad. At least I can still play a PlayStation VR, hang out with you guys here, chat with you. At least I can still cook my own food. You know, there's always worse. There's worst case scenarios, guys. Uh, look at people in Somalia and the way they lived. Look at people in Rwanda. And how many of them got killed? How many of them got genocide? Look at... Uh, situation that happened past few years in Syria look what happened in Syria I mean what kind of shitty end of a stick they've got right those kids in Syria no one asked them hey are you okay with this no but they were able to make the best of it so things can always be worse and I always try to appreciate because had people ask me how do you know things can go worse? Because I'm from Bosnia, born in Bosnia, Sarajevo. I've been through a war, very bloody war, 1992-1995, Sarajevo, Bosnia. Uh, it was a civil war between Muslim Bosnians versus uh, Serbo Bosnians. So it's like Serbian Bosnians versus Muslim Bosnians. Okay. And um, it was a very bloody war. So I've been through it. I know how bad it can get. I've been there. I think my PlayStation is dying, dude. I think my PlayStation VR is dying. Look, it's dimming. Now, what's going on? Hold on. Here we go. It's actually kind of cool. I like this, that it's like this, like a camera. The cam... <laughs> it's Phil Spencer. No, it's Neil Cockman. Neil Cockman virus. <laughs> Neil Cockman virus. <laughs> Oh, God. 
I listen, man. I, Neil is, you know, Neil is actually a pretty cool guy. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you why he's a pretty cool guy. Because... Hey, what's up, Desperado? Because he's okay, dude. He doesn't really... He's got a thick skin, and he likes to... He likes to laugh. He likes to uh, have a good time. So he's not an asshole, dude. Uh, sure, he made an asshole move to, to kill Joe. But I don't think he's a... He's an asshole. That's it. Fuck it. Neil Cockman is an asshole. This is how I know he's an asshole. They gave him a copy of Ghost of Tsushima. They gave him an early copy of Ghost of Tsushima. And now he's playing it. How dare you. No, I haven't watched nothing about Ghost of Tsushima. Hold on. We got any Sasquatches here? Let's see. Neil Cockman killed our Joel. Our beloved Joel, man. Where's your heart, man? I think Joel would have rather died by some super, super clicker, bloater, zombie instead of Abby. I think he was like, he would say, hey, at least I fought a good fight. It was an honorable fight. Uh, but, yeah, getting whipped by... First he got shot by a shotgun, right? In his kneecap. And then here comes the base... Uh, no, not the baseball, the, uh, the golf club. And hey, where the fuck did she find the golf club? Why, why where, where'd you get the... Where the fuck did she get that golf club? And why is she using a golf club? No one seems to explain that to me. What, the golf club just all of a sudden appeared? Does she, she does a, here's what, it's, the whole fucking scene made no fucking sense. Does Abby strikes me as somebody who plays golf? No. She lifts weights. She lifts weights. She wants to be big, and she is big. She strikes me as somebody who would be like in UFC MMA, fighting and sparring. She doesn't strike me as somebody who plays a fucking golf um, I don't know. I mean, the whole fucking, that, that whole scene, it's, every time I see that scene, every time I see that fucking scene, I want to vomit. I throw up, dude. I just like, I puke all over. Such a, such a dirty, 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 nasty. And this is what Neil Cuckman, he, uh, look, I think he knows. People are pissed off because the way you shit on our beloved character. We don't have a problem if he had passed away in an honorable way. You know, on his deathbed, peacefully. We wouldn't have a problem with that. Sure, he would be sad, but it would be acceptable. What we cannot accept is the way you pissed all over him, dude. It's just, I don't know, man. When I think about it right now, I agree with Angry Joe. And when I think about it right now, he's right. This, this makes no fucking sense. Really? Yeah, it makes no goddamn sense. And then he says, nobody cares about Joel more than me. Okay, if that's true, Mr. Cockman, if that's true, then why would you let some writer come in and tell you he needs to die? You should tell that writer... Get the fuck out of my office. You're fired. Next writer, what kind of ideas do you have? Come on. Do you think George Lucas would have... Um, nobody would have... You think... J, J, I know exactly what James Cameron would have said. Get the fuck out of my office. Don't let that fucking door hit you on your way out. Get the fuck out of here. I mean, he sold himself to some agenda. I swear to God. The, the whole game feels... Is trying to appeal to, I don't know, LGBTQT community. It's trying to appeal Me Too movement. It's trying to appeal SJWs. It's just trying to appeal to a certain demographic. And it's being kind of shoved down our throat. Like, you have to like this. 
We don't care. You have to like it. You have to like it. No more casting couch. No more casting couch. You have to like this. Casting couch. Casting couch has been there since fucking 1960s, 1940s, 1950s. It's been there forever. All of a sudden now everybody's shocked. Oh, in La La Land, like nobody fucking knew. La La Land, Los Angeles. Los Angeles is the most perverted fucking city. It's a porn capital. The porn fucking capital. You're looking for a porn capital? What's fucking there? The most perverted fucking city. I'll fucking say it. I've been to the fucking valley. You just have to take a little peek next to the pool, someone's fucking pool, and you'll see they're banging. They're shooting loads. They got a big fucking orgy on the, on the fucking valley on the hills. Uh, you know, so everybody, all of a sudden, everybody's shocked. Oh, this is going on. Yes. They willingly did this so they can become movie stars. No one, nobody forced, no one forced any actress to become an actress. But this is the way it is. You want the producer to put you in the movie? Well, you got to suck his cock. You got to suck his fucking cock. That's that. Otherwise, he'll find somebody else who will suck his cock to, pu to put her in that movie. That's the way it was. That's the way it always been like that in Hollywood. It never changed. But now all of a sudden, now oh, everybody's freaking out. Oh, 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 we didn't know about this. Oh, oh. Ah, shut the fuck up. You sucked that cock. You liked it. And now because of it, you are a movie star. You're living large. So shut the fuck up. It's either that or be on a fucking street and suck some guy who has STDs on the fucking street. Or some gangbangers are going to fucking rape you or something. So let's not have a double standards here. But what bothers me is this, man. What fucking bothers me is this is the double standard. Everyone's playing a victim these days. Everyone is playing a fucking victim. But nobody wants to say, hey, I knew what I was doing. I knew that I had to go in. This guy had to fuck me in order for me to become a movie star. Just fucking say it. Own it. Own it. Charlize Theron, own it. Own it. Who else is the other actress? Fucking own it. Just say it. This is what I had to do. But now, all of a sudden, you are a victim. No. A victim is a person who has no choice. A victim is somebody who is being forced to do something without having any choice. You had a choice. You didn't have to suck his cock. You could have fucking left. I don't know. Be a, a Find another profession. Be a, uh, I don't know, a real estate agent sell fucking houses i don't fucking know but this this here's the problem nobody wants to talk like i talk nobody wants to talk about the honesty anymore that's that's the problem right now in our society nobody wants to be honest everybody just want to play a victim and talk out of their ass let me be the only fucking guy on this planet that's going to call it honestly now do I agree with these producers? No, they're pieces of shit. You shouldn't be treating somebody like that who wants to be an artist, who wants to be an actor. You shouldn't do that to them. You shouldn't take advantage. Yes, they're pieces of shits and they should be locked up. Fuck them. They should be put in fucking jail. But this has been going on forever in Los Angeles, in Hollywood. Since 1940s, since Rat Pack... Okay, since Frank Sinatra and mobsters and all this other shit, it's been going on forever. But all of a sudden now, everybody's acting like, oh, I didn't know that. If I go to Los Angeles, if I go to Hollywood, oh, uh, everything's going to be hunky-dory. No, if you're good looking, they want to fuck you. You got to do what they tell you to do if you want to be a big movie star. But yeah, but then let's not talk about that. But nobody forced you. No one 
fucking forced you. So what I'm looking at this, I'm looking at it from two, two sides of the coin. I look at it from a two sides of the coin. You're not a victim. You choose to be a victim because you agreed to it. You agreed to get fucked in the ass. To become a movie star. We're talking about a casting couch. We're talking about a Hollywood and all this Me Too movement, SJW crap that's been shoved down people's throats. You know, that kind of shit. We're talking about the uh, Neil Druckmann and the whole Haley Gross writing and how it's really all about, you know, how the man, men are bad, men are, you know, a bunch of perverts. This, sure, there's perverts, man, but there's also sluts. They exist. There's a bunch of sluts out there. They'll suck a cock for, for a dollar. They'll, they'll, they'll suck a fucking cock. All right. But let's not generalize everybody the same way. I don't agree with these producers, what they've been doing. But hey, that's the way it is. That's the way it was. Nobody forced you, Charlize Theron, to become an actress. But you knew what you were getting into. When you went to visit that guy in the valley, that producer, that hotshot producer. So if he showed you his ding dong, well, guess what? What did you think? Why, why, why do you think he called you there? He called you there because he wants to show you his ding dong. He wants to test you. It's called a casting couch. But you're not a victim. You choose to go there. You choose to go there. At the very late hours, you choose to go there. But now all of a sudden, I'm a victim. No, you're not. Same thing with you, Alyssa Milano. You're not, you're not a victim. You choose. Same thing with you, Gwyneth Paltrow. You knew exactly uh, when you go see Weinstein, that's what you have to deal with. You knew exactly. If you want to be a movie, movie star, if you want to make it in fucking Miramax, if you want to make it in uh, Hollywood, you have to go through that shit. But nobody forced you to do it. You could have become, I don't know, real estate agent. You could have become, an, uh, I don't know, an assistant in some firm company, uh, you know, administrative assistant or something. You could have chosen a different career. All I'm, listen, guys, all I'm saying is this. Two wrongs don't make it right. All right? And the victim thing has been kind of used and toast around like some kind of a sponge. Everybody's a victim these days, but nobody wants to tell you that they choose to be a victim. They chosen to be a victim because they know if they do this thing, that's the only way they can become a big movie star. That's the only way they can become famous. Okay. But no, let's play a victim. So anyway, that was my whole point. I'm just sick and tired of, uh, of double standards, man. You know, there's too much double standards, and uh, that's what pisses me off about Hollywood, you know. I had no choice. I was a victim in Hollywood. <laughs> no, you lived fucking great life. With a big fucking villa, big mansions, great lifestyle. But you knew, you knew the price you had to pay. And you knew that you had to go through that process for you to become a movie star. Marilyn Monroe did the same thing. Do you know how many guys she fucking fucked? Shitload of fucking guys she fucking fucked. Marilyn Monroe. This has been going on forever. Since 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, 1980s, 1990s. This is nothing new. But all of a sudden, everybody, ooh, me too, me too, I'm a victim. But nobody wants to talk about that. Nah, let's, let's just not talk about that shit. Let's just ignore that. Let's just use a double standard narrative. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm honored. I'm honored to be the only one to say it like it is.
then people say, so wait a minute, so you are actually supporting these producers. No, I don't support them. They're pieces of shit. They're taking the advantage of an individual in order for them to become successful. And that's not cool. That's not cool. I don't like that. And I'm simply saying, these actresses like Gwyneth Paltrow and all the other ones, and what's the other girl from um, Charlize Theron, and there's another one, forget the names. They knew what they were getting into. They knew exactly what they're getting into. Oh, I didn't know that's what this was going to be. Yes, you knew. You knew exactly what's it going to be. And you probably, maybe you enjoyed it. I don't know. It's possible you might have enjoyed it. Because it didn't seem to bother you 20 years ago. It seemed to fucking bother you 25 years ago. It didn't seem to bother you 30 years ago. But all of a sudden now, it seems to fucking bother you. Uh, so, I just, man, I can't stand the double standard. I, I can't stand fakeness. Uh, fake people, dishonest people. I like to be in the middle like a devil's advocate. Think of me like a devil's advocate. I like to look at the facts and I like to call it from the both sides of the angle. Two wrongs don't make a right, guys. But anyway, Moving on to the to the gaming. What were you guys saying? <laughs> this this shit turned into extra extra. I don't know how how did my uh, from COVID nineteen to extra extra. I'm gonna blame Neil Cockman. This is all Neil Cockman's fault. <laughs> but come on, really? I mean, look look at the movies. Uh, it's always a woman. She's strong. She will survive. Men are pigs. Even in the, in the new game, uh, the Outlanders, whatever it's called, it's just all. It's just. It's all. A bunch of females winning. Guys, a bunch of pieces of shit. They're they're useless. You know what I mean? It's just it's the whole thing's being shoved down my throat. You need, you need a female leader, like Charlize Theron. Yes. Because she's the only one that can go through the past, throughout the history, survive over and over again. And she will show you how to grow a proper, proper masculinity. Because she's the leader. I don't know, man. Maybe it's just me. But uh, I definitely notice on today's movies, on today's entertainment, on today's video games, this narrative has been shoved down our throat. They want me to like something because that's what they want me to, to that's the idea they want me to, to, to have. That's not how the world works. People try that. They try that. It didn't work out. The Marxism doesn't work. Stalin tried that. Hitler tried that. Guess what happened? They lost. Look at these empires. They all got torn apart. It didn't work out. Soviet Union didn't work out. Even Yugoslavia didn't work out. I mean, not none of them worked out. Do you know why none of them worked out? Because you cannot have... Dictatorship doesn't work. People don't like to be told what to do. People don't like it when you tell them what to think, what to think, how to sleep, how to dream, how to eat, how to shit, how to piss, how to drink. People don't like to be human beings, don't respond well when you're telling them what to do. And it doesn't work. It never did in the history that I remember of 40 years. 
They tried that shit long, long time ago. It doesn't work. Did I play a Batman? Um, which which Batman? Arkham City or Arkham Knight? Let's go drive a Tesla, dude. I want to drive a Tesla. I played it on both. I played it on both. Uh, hold on a second, guys. Let me see what time it is. Okay. Um... Yeah, uh, Cameron, I played it on both PC, consoles, and even on OnLive, I played it on a cloud, first cloud gaming service called OnLive. So yeah, I played it on a bunch of... Uh, bunch of different systems. You know, it's interesting, man. When when you look at these... Um, I, 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 gotta, I, gotta, I gotta say something. I gotta get something off my chest. And this... You, you guys don't have to agree with this. That's fine. This is me. This is me saying it publicly. And I feel like I should say this. Uh, this live stream, this video, has a life of its own. Uh, I don't know who's going to watch this. doesn't really matter. I don't care. But I feel like i got to say something. The one thing I've noticed lately on the Twitter, on the YouTube, there's this fakeness, fakeness that people are putting on about themselves. And they're not telling you exactly how they really feel. They're not, they're not telling you exactly what they're really going through. They're putting on this fakeness. Now, I'm not saying everybody. There's some, some excellent individuals on YouTube and Twitter to whom you probably never heard of. But there's a majority out there. They're like all repeating the same thing. They're all pretty much doing the same thing. They're all pretty much acting the same way. They're ignoring the same way. Uh, they're laughing the same way. They're agreeing predictably the same way. Oh, I, I agree on that, yes. Uh, actually, I disagree. Uh, on, on, on a second thought, I agree. I agree with that. Yes, yes. Sorry to, to cut you off like that, but I agree. You know, everybody's just like, there's a fakeness to it. It's, there's this such big goulash of fucking fake, fakeness. I have never seen anything like this in my entire freaking life. And this is really, this is not going to help anybody, this fakeness. And I think the reason why we're in this, in this fuckery, in this clusterfuck, the reason why we're in this clusterfuck I don't know how else to call it except a cluster fuck. It's because of this fakeness. People pretending that they care about something when in fact even the person to whom you're telling that you care, they know deep down you don't care. You're just saying it because it's the right thing to say. But you don't want to really tell them the honesty. But maybe if you tell that individual the honesty, maybe he will respect you for being honest. There's this fakeness, this fear of, oh, I, I better, I, I better be uh, uh, on the same page. You know, I don't want to, you know, I I, 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 I have to repeat what they repeat. I, 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 nobody thinks for themselves. 
everybody's afraid on what they're going to fucking say. Oh, 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 did, was, oh, did I offend somebody? Good. I'm glad you fucking offended somebody. It's called the first fucking amendment. It's called being an alpha male. It's called having fucking balls. Standing up for yourself. It's called being a badass. To show other people, to let them know I'm an alpha, I'm not a beta. I'll fucking tell you exactly how I fucking feel. Own it. Own your fucking shit. But there's so much fakeness out there. So much fakeness that I just can't believe. What happened? How do we turn into this soft, 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 almost like a male feminism society where everybody's soft. Everybody got a skinny, tight legs with a skinny, tight jeans and a skinny, tight shirts and a little pencil neck necks. And they have the same hair, the same thing. What the fuck happened here? You know, where is that... That Joel Miller... Real alpha male... Characters. They're dinosaurs. They're gone. There's a fakeness now... Surrounding this society. That's all I gotta say about that, man. Yeah. I don't know how you guys feel. Maybe I'm tripping, I don't know. You can tell me, hey, Mr. Fork, I think you're tripping. I think you took some kind of a uh, tripping Kool-Aid, whatever. Gotta love Honda. Honda Civic Type R. I mean, I'm just trying to understand what kind of life is that you're constantly living in fucking fear you're constantly living in fear you're worrying about what other people think of you you're worrying about on how you're going to be perceived I don't give a rat's ass how people perceive me I don't give a rat's ass what people think about me I just don't give a shit don't like it too fucking bad your problem not mine um but there's this fakeness where everyone is trying to pander to a certain group of tribes. Ooh, I, I, uh, I, I'm with this tribe over here. I, I really don't want to offend my tribe. Uh, they will outcast me. I, I, I need to be their bitch. Otherwise, I won't get rich. So I'll do. I'll be a good. I'll be a good. You know, tribal man. And I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do exactly what they ask of me. I'll, I'll agree on everything. Uh, you know, it's like some pussification shit, pussification generation, generation of cowards and pussification. Fuck, man. Anyway, what were you saying, James? <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. I'm a dinosaur driving a fucking PlayStation VR, digital VR Honda. <laughs> I'm a dinosaur. Or maybe I'm not. I don't know. What do you think, Otacon? You think this whole thing stank? Maybe we should ask Naomi. But I don't know. I think Naomi might have a difference of opinion. She might not like it. Who the fuck knows, man? I'm sure she would have a difference of opinion. But Naomi, 
what about the First Amendment? I should be able to, to say what I think. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not supposed to. Oh, fine. I'm just gonna move to Alaska, get my huskies, go on a sled. I'm done with this. <laughs> One more day, guys. 24 hours still goes to Tsushima. Roach. Roach. What the fuck is going on here, Roach? Roach, where's Tom Cruise? Why? Well, I don't know. Roach, we need Tom Cruise to bring us a cruise ship. I'm not swimming here, Roach. There's a big crack in here. <laughs> what happened to Tom Cruise, man? You hear nothing from him. Hey, I don't know, man. You gotta, you gotta admire that about Tom Cruise. He doesn't get involved in politics. He just fucking makes his movies and that's that. You know, that's what I like about Tom Cruise. He just does what he does best. Puts in a pure adrenaline entertainment. That's it. Man, Roach. Yeah, man, it's the whole thing is bullshit. Colonel, did I tell you that the Otagar, out of old people, Otagar, he's a simp. Simp for Naomi. How do I know? Well, Mei Ling, she told me that he's a simp. He's been simping Naomi for quite a while now. Ever since the whole incident, Hudson River. I remember the whole thing. The whole thing stank. <laughs> <laughs> so should I not buy The Last of Us? You, here's the thing. Uh, James, here's the thing. I think you should buy it knowing what you know. There's gonna be some stuff in that game that's gonna probably piss you off. Uh, but I think you should experience the game for what it is. Don't expect the game to be some kind of like a holy grail that's gonna make you come back and play again. Uh, it's not that type of a game. Uh, most likely you will be playing Ghost of Tsushima again and again. But The Last of Us, it's a, it's a something you need to experience for what it is. Experience this for what it is. And that's what I've been trying to tell everybody. Uh, look, when it comes to accessibility, the accessibility of customizations, difficulty levels, dude, there's so much you can do in that game. You can even have, you can even choose to be invisible when you are crawling. You can also choose how often do you want the enemies to flank you. Uh, you can choose to see enemies through the wall. I mean, dude, there's, there's so much. So there's so much in terms of accessibility that I like. And in graphics, and then, and, you know, listen, the, the gameplay, it's just top-notch, man. You know, it's very realistic. The way the characters move, the way they reload, the way they fight, the way they dodge. Uh, but the story, it's something you're going to have to digest. And just accept it for what it is. I don't think for you it's going to be a big problem playing as Abby. Because... Did you play the first Last of Us? Uh, James, did you play it? I just, I, that's what I just need to know. 
Because if you are coming from The Last of Us, number one, you know, you care about these two characters. You are attached to Ellie. You are attached to Joel. You, you just care about these two characters. So, these two characters is the reason why people love the first game. Now, in a sequel, that's not the case. In a sequel, the game taking a 360, a 360 turn, it actually skipped four years. Not only did the game didn't give a shit to continue where it stopped, but it went straight to the four years. Joel is older now. Elite's 19. Yes, they do have some flashbacks. They go back and forth. They show you, okay, what was going on, a little glimpse of it. But, uh, and I think this is the, this is the, this is the part where people just have a difficult time accepting the decisions that were made. And this game will always, this, listen, The Last of Us Part 2 will become like The Last Jedi. And what happened to Last Jedi? It's been canceled. Like it, it never existed. They're going to totally erase it. Yeah, for real. They're going to erase that movie. Disney is going to erase The Last Jedi. And they even thought, they, they're talking to George Lucas to bring George Lucas to reboot a new Star Wars. Because Kathleen Kennedy, again, brought her her agendas in the Disney movies, in the Disney Star Wars. And see, this is this is the issue, this is the point. When you are trying to to shove your agenda, to shove your your beliefs into a entertainment into a movie or a video game. So, is The Last of Us going to be canceled? Removed? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't think so. But look at The, la look at the Last Jedi. Who would have thought that The Last Jedi would be canceled? But look, man, we live in some strange times. It's possible they might cancel it. They might say, hey, let's scrap the the part two and let's create a uh, from the beginning for the PlayStation 5 part two for the last of us the the first game and let's just forget about the part two like it never existed uh is that gonna happen I don't know dude uh is Troy Baker's gonna come back or are they going to have to find another actor to 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 get similar voice like he did, you know, with that Texas accent? You think I let you do this on your own? Uh, I don't know. Um, who the fuck knows, man? It, it's such a such a fuckery. It, this whole year is such a fuckery. It's like everybody's drunk, coked up snort it bunch of shit in their nose nostrils and they're all drunk and high on cannabis and they're having an orgy and they don't know who they're fucking they're just fucking whatever's there they might be fucking a chair i don't know uh it's just one big clusterfuck this whole year's clusterfuck man and i don't know man so Should you buy the game? I don't want to tell you to buy it. I think, James, you already have seen most of it throughout my live streams. I dedicated 12 days on the live stream, and I think you've seen most of it. Um, I don't know. Maybe you should go through those live streams again when you have some free time. Look at them. But I don't, I don't know. Should you buy it? Maybe you should wait for the PlayStation 5 version. Maybe you should wait till it goes on sale for Thanksgiving or something, buy it cheap, and then give it a try. Um, it, it's not one of those games that I can say, oh shit, you gotta buy this game. Fuck, dude, you gotta have this game. 
it's not that type of a game. It's 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 a game that it will appeal to a uh, different kind of a mindset. You know what I mean? Well, anyway, guys, that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, I'm tired as fuck, dude. I'll see you guys on Friday. Tomorrow, I'm not going to do anything. Tomorrow, I'm just going to rest. I'm just going to sleep for 24 hours and then wake up at 6 in the morning or something. I don't know. <laughs> and I'll see you guys on Friday for Tsushima. We'll get to Ghost of Tsushima. We're going to play some Ghost of Tsushima on Friday, the 12th noon. I know, James, but I'm out of here. It's all good. I got to go, man. I'm out of here. Illuminati's are watching me. They're watching me closely. Truman Show, Ed Harris, they're all watching me. I said, dude, you talk too much, man. You're spitting out the truth about Dr. Disrespect. Don't talk about Dr. Disrespect. <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm out of here, guys. I'll see you on the Ghost of Tsushima. 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 Friday is going to be lit. Fucking A, James. It's going to be fucking awesome. <laughs> Akira Kurosawa. That's it. Sayonara. I'm out of here. Later, guys. Be good. Stay safe. And uh, for the love of God, stay safe. Stay safe. Watch your surroundings. Be careful. Stay safe. It's a fucking craziness out there. Just stay safe. Please, just stay safe. All right, see you Friday. Take care. By the way, um, before I leave, um, Deadly Premonitions 2 will continue sometime next week after Ghost of Tsushima. But uh, we're not done with Deadly Premon Premonition 2. That will continue, don't worry. Deadly Premonitions and your favorite guitar song will we'll come back. It will come back. So I want everybody to understand Deadly Premonition, it's taking a little break, but it will continue. After Ghost of Tsushima. All right. So we will continue to our story in just a moment following a station and identification. Sayonara. See you Friday. 12 o'clock noon, straight up. 12 o'clock noon, Friday. 10 hours. 10 freaking hours live stream between 12 and 2200 hours. So 1200 hours and 2200 hours. 10 p.m. So it's going to be between 12 noon and 10 p.m. It's going to be awesome. 10 hour live stream. Fucking A. All right, guys. See ya. I'll bring Hideo Kojima with me. Hideo Kojima will be there. I'll, I'll bring him. I'll, I'll put him in there. <laughs> Desperado know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll see you Friday. <laughs> Hopefully, we won't be delivering any packages on Ghost of Tsushima. <laughs> All right, guys. I got to go. See ya. We'll have fun. Listen, I guarantee you we're going to have a blast. We're going to have a great fucking time on Friday. I Seriously, I guarantee you, we'll have a great fucking time. We'll have a super great... Dude, I'm going to be 110%. This will be a different kind of a Mr. 4K. You haven't seen this type of a Mr. 4K on Friday. This will be 110%. Full throttle. So get ready for Friday. Thank you all. Thank you, James. Thank you, uh, MUW. And Mamba Man as well, of course. And Desperado. Thank you, Desperado. Thank you all. And uh, hasta mañana. Hasta mañana. I'm out of here. Out of here. Hasta mañana. What you talking about over here? All right. Hasta mañana. I'm out. <laughs>
the pendejo. Don't leave, pendejo. I said, I got to go, Holmes. I got to go. All right. Pendejo has got to go and get some sleep. <laughs> Later, guys. There you go. <laughs> All right. I'm leaving for sure this time. All right. Knock it off. It's time to leave. Roach. Roach. Get over here. Roach. Where's Trish? Oh, she's here. Oh, good. Bye.